Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of React WooCommerce team with the REST API. In the previous video, we built the shipping details and billing details form and the um, handling of the input in the countries, etc. Now we're going to do it. what we're going to do now is we're going to display the items from the back. So let's do that. Okay, so we'll go to the checkout directory inside components and we'll create a file called your order.js. We'll paste the code snippet and I'll explain to you what's going on there. We also need to have the checkout cart item. So let's get that. So inside of checkout, checkout cart item, paste it. And I'll explain to you these two things. There you go. So you have a component called your order. Um, you can import fragment like so, or you can just use like that also. That will also work. Okay. So that's your React fragment. Uh, you pass the cart inside of that. And then we basically say that if the cart is available, great. If it is available, then create a table. And we'll have product, total, card items dot length. We map through the card item and then we display the checkout cart item here. Okay. And last one will be the total of, of this data. So we already dealt with the card and we know what the data shape look li looks like. I'm not going to explain to you over again. If you haven't watched the previous video, you can do that. But just to tell you the card has card items. Um, it has currency and stuff. Let me just quickly show that to you. As so you go over here, go to applications. Uh, go to the next cart and there you go you can see that you've got cart items uh, it has currency it has got all, all sort of uh, cart related data okay great if you're wondering we are saving all this information in the local storage so can the user manipulate this information no they can't why because when we go ahead and process the um, data with this drive and we create the order all we pass is just the id and the quantity so just the idea of the product and the quantity we don't really pass the price so they can't really fidget with it so i'm going to now uh, i'm going to explain to you the checkout cart item which is basically here we are looping through each of the cart item in this using this component where we have the image we are using the um, importing the image from my image component passing the alt source all of that things uh, we are pulling that from the data images uh, from the um, product from the from the cart passing the product id uh, the name of the product the currency the total etc close that and i'm just going to use uh, this your order component here so we'll create another section and this will be called your order and import it on top so h2 uh, your order this we are pulling that and we're already passing the cart into that we have got the cart available we are just passing that information now if you go and check there you go, congratulations. You've got the entire cart with the image, you've got the uh, name of the product, you've got the price, so all of that data, okay? Next thing we're going to do is basically add the payment mode. So let's create a component for that. So we'll go back to our checkout directory, create a file called paymentnotes.js and I'm going to paste the code snippet here and I'll explain to you. So we already built the error component which we are pulling uh, we're saying payment modes input handle on change we're pulling the errors and payment method from input and then here we have the errors component uh, which we'll deal with in case if there's an error then we have different uh, input fields here we have the direct bank transfer we have the um, pay with paypal we have check payment pay with stripe and we have the um, jcc payment gateway redirect cc avenue stripe as well okay did we get stripe twice there you go so you've got all of those and um, each one has a value and has a name also payment method and the type is radio and checked if the payment method value is to any of these will automatically get checked so that's what's happening here uh, it's a good practice to break it into multiple lines i'm not doing that to save time but you go ahead and break it into multiple lines for your project Okay, so that's your payment mode and I'm going to use that inside of my checkout form. Just down below, we'll say payment modes and I'm going to pull it on top, import it on top. Now if you go back and check, 
there you go you've got all the payment modes pay with paypal check payment cash delivery great awesome that works great since we are using handle all chain on change it's the same function for all the input fields so it's already going to handle all of that and put that into our uh, input state okay uh, whatever user selected uh, the next thing we do is basically add the order processing button there we go so i pasted that as uh, so a div button is order processing cx cx we import that on top no let's import that import cx import cx from class names yeah there you go you can see how big this already becomes i'm trying to keep this small as possible so this component so cx you've got the class names uh, again if the order is processing i don't want the user to keep clicking on the you know <laughs> place order this is a place order button because this order is already being processed okay notice that i haven't added any um, event handler uh, function here why because the form the whole form itself has this handle on form submit so if it has any button and you if the user clicks on that that function will automatically trigger the order processing okay so that's going to handle that is order processing uh, and you can see that that basically handles the is order processing uh, another thing we want to do is basically show some loading state to the user uh, so, so you see there's your place order okay so let's do that so this will be checkout loading below this we say if order is processing say processing order if there's any error just print that error with <laughs> with with this sad smiley and saying please please try again okay so all of this we already created initially if you remember i've explained that in the previous video we already created all these states because we were going to need that and now we can go really fast in developing because we did all the heavy lifting part all the all the main parts uh, of this program earlier right of course there's still much to do because we kind of building the entire checkout functionality from scratch so but this is good for learning i i must tell you you're gonna love it so that's that so so now if you inspect element, if we click on check, check payment, so notice that, so let me just pull this out. So now if you say check payment, you can see it says check. JCC, Stripe, now it's saying Stripe. You put your name there. You'll see under shipping you have name as Imran over here. Great, awesome. So there you go. So you've got a place order, you've got payment methods, and you've got, I think there should be a title, I believe, right? Should be a title that select, select your mode of payment. I know that's, that's better. Okay, so that's that. So user will select one of these. Uh, and of course we are, by default, we are selecting uh, cash on delivery, but you know, of course you can select whatever you want. Uh, why we have that as default? Because notice that, um, over here we put COD. If I put Stripe over here, like that, yeah, there you go. You got the Stripe, right? Awesome. But uh, let's keep it to COD. Okay. Awesome. Uh, I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. Uh, in the next video, we're going to continue further on this development, like uh, making payments, creating orders, and and things like those. Uh, if you like the video, please uh, give super thanks to support my work. Uh, Stripe repository. And follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran Sayed. And follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Coditex. I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.